Hey everybody, Regan Hagstead here with Mortgage Success Blueprint. And today I wanted to do another installment of our interview series. I've got Dave Cook with me out of the Denver metro area. Uh, Dave did about 50 million plus last year in, in home loans. And one of the things that I've gotten to know about Dave's business that he does really well that I feel like we could share with everybody and hopefully you can implement in your business is his database management, his CRM, how he stays in touch with past clients, his new referrals, and leads in general. And it's one of the areas that I personally know I'm not as strong as I should be on, but Dave does a, a really killer job. So Dave, thank you for coming on today. Um, and I guess let's just dive right into it. You know, What do you see as the biggest value you get about having a really good database and CRM? Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, a work in progress. It's not something I've always uh, I've had mastered, mastered, nor do I um, consider it something I've got mastered. But I'm definitely um, a lot better than I was, you know, five, ten, fifteen years ago. Um, you know, for me, the biggest thing about a CRM, and this is something I've told people, you've probably heard it before, is the best CRM is the one that you use. Um, so, you know, if there's people listening listening to this that are killing it on their current, you know, CRM, maybe it's Outlook. Um, you know, it's a pretty basic version. If it works for you, use it. Um, you know, the only time I think you really need to figure out, should I do something different is if you feel like you're not doing, um, as good as you could be. Um, for me, my, you know, my CRM, if I was stuck, um, somewhere, you know, someone was taking me to an island and, and I had to choose one thing for business, it would be my CRM because it's, I live and breathe in my CRM every day. I can't imagine not having it. If it, if it was not working one day, I would probably, you know, go, go to the park and do something else because it's, it's so <laughs> integral to what I do. Yeah. And let, let me ask you this. So you say like, it, it's kind of like your lifeline, right? But, you know, I know a lot of folks that have, they have a database or they have a CRM. And I find this myself sometimes, I've seen it from other people, is the CRM they get has like all these bells and whistles, like 50 different things that they could use it for and do this and do that. And what they end up doing is they do a little bit of all of it and then like they just kind of aren't super pumped on your CRM. Like when you first started building out, which is essentially your, sounds like your daily playbook, how did you start? Because obviously you can't do everything all at once. So like, Walk me through like what that looks like or looked like for you. Yeah, so most um, most good CRMs are going to be pretty robust, and I think that's um, something that stops a lot of loan officers from even trying to use it. Um, you know, I mean, our company is pretty big, and we have a lot of loan officers, and and we have a really good CRM. And you know, when I was talking to our admin, you know, IT people, they said probably only 25% of our, our loan officers um, are actually using our CRM on a, on a daily basis. And of those 25%, I would say probably less than, you know, 10 or 20% are actually utilizing it, you know, really good. Um, you know, cool so- question on that. Did, did they say that, are those the top people in your company? Is, it, is there a correlation? Um, you know, I didn't ask that, but I would, I would venture to guess that, uh, there definitely is some correlation there. Um, you know, I, I think that definitely <laughs> would ring true. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean the, the, the CRM that, you know, most people are is gonna, going to use is going to be pretty robust and in, in going to have lots of bells and whistles. Um, the biggest thing with any CRM is just, you know, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a Rolodex. Um, it's where you store, your client's phone number, their their name, their email, and then you know out from there you start talking about tracking you know emails and phone calls, and then out from there you start talking about uh, pipeline reports and um, you know tracking all sorts of other events. But you know at the core, it's really just keeping track of of who are your clients and having that data readily available. So when you're talking about all the bells and whistles, like yeah, that stuff is great. But if you're someone that is like not really using a CRM or maybe your CRM is not as good as you want, like just start using something and kind of getting into it. Like our CRM is super robust. It's got every bell and whistle you could ever want. But, you know, I'm not an expert on all of those bells and whistles, but I'm an expert on like the core function of what a CRM should be, which is having my clients um, 
data in there and making sure that, you know, if I talk to someone a year later that I can access, you know, the fact that they, you know, just did this or that, you know, and so that that sort of stuff is key. And then kind of from there, once you become an expert on that core stuff, then you can start to grow the other stuff. Got it. And so obviously you've got the core stuff, names, data, you know, follow up timelines and, and notes, right? Mm -hmm. I think the one thing that I always find is one of the powerful pieces of a CRM beyond those things. Like if you're not really good at those things in your CRM, like you, you see somebody's name, but they don't even have a phone number and email, like that's a wasted time, right? Mm -hmm. But if you get that stuff, it's kind of like, do you literally call everybody in that CRM? Or do you start setting up those other functions of uh, monthly newsletters or follow-up campaigns that are automated? I mean, do you utilize those tools that CRMs offer? Yeah, so with me, um our, you know, our company controls our CRM. So, you know, there's certain loan officers out there that either their company doesn't provide a CRM or maybe they don't like the one. And so they might go rogue and do it on their own. Um, we have it set up where it's, it's part of our company structure. And so our company has already set up the, um, the automation part where it ties into our loan officer, um, you know, our LOS and, you know, the drip campaigns are already there. Um, so yeah, there's got to be a balance of like automation, but also making sure that you're going in there and, and doing, you know, phone calls and that sort of thing. Um, you know, for me, one of the, the two big things are, you know, making birthday calls and then, you know, following up with clients that you've closed on to, uh, you know, make sure you do reviews of their mortgage and that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's funny though. Here's the, the one thing that I, I notice a lot with, um, younger loan officers is, you know, and this is a perfect example. Like, let's say a client calls me, um, over the weekend and they, maybe they just did a loan application on my website and, you know, I get a loan app coming through on Sunday night and I call them on Monday morning. And, uh, by the time I call them, you know, they go, Hey Dave, thanks for, uh, giving me a call. But I actually, um, uh, you know, got a call from my realtor and, you know, there was another, they're uh, a lender that uh, she highly recommended. So we're going to end up going with them. We're already under contract. Um, and, but I have all the client's data. I have the address that they're buying in 30 days, like all that stuff. Most loan officers, I would say, would be like, okay, great. Thanks. You know, thanks for the opportunity. And they would probably not keep that person in their CRM. They would probably delete it or never touch that, that contact again. One of the things that I've noticed is when I'm talking to people I'm looking at it is I'm just buying brain cells and I want every single person to be in my CRM because I follow up not only with the people that I've closed loans on, but more importantly, the people I haven't. And I can't tell you the amount of people that I've talked to like five, six, seven years down the road, call them up on their birthday, wish them well. And they're like, oh my gosh, you are amazing with your follow up. Um, by the way, I need to talk to you about another house and I'm buying half the time. They don't even remember that I, I didn't do their loan, which is funny. And it's funny too. Like, so, you know, I, I agree a hundred percent. I see that all the time. One of the things that I started doing like probably three years ago, it's kind of a mindset shift. Initially, it's like you get that scenario that you just played out about the call on Sunday and then Monday they're in contract using another lender. Like my initial reaction was like, forget them. Like you're kind of angry or like you're wasting my time, mm -hmm. like stuff yeah. like that. And I kind of shifted that mindset to, well, you know what, it's too bad. I, unfortunately, we weren't able to connect. Uh, you know, I feel like I didn't do a good enough job or maybe it wasn't as prompt or maybe it was just things out of our control. But would you mind if I scheduled you in our uh, mortgage management plan? And I've never had somebody say no. Like nobody's ever turned me down for that. And I'm like, because typically most lenders won't do this. I'm sure the person you're working with isn't gonna do this either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call you a couple days after you close. I'm going to find out what your loan amount ended up being and the final terms ended up being. I'm going to set you up on my automated system. And if anybody uses Optimal Blue, OB has a great Weight Watch program mm -hmm. where all you do is put in their name, the you know kind of general terms of their scenario, purchase price, loan amount, interest rate, and it runs it indefinitely. And anytime there's a quarter percent or whatever you set it up reduction, you're going to get a ping. Yep. And when we had those years of call it 2012, 2016, like some of these others where rates dropped, like I would venture to say 30% of my refinances 
came from that, came from yeah. a rate watch who another lender closed and it's just freebie. So like you mm -hmm. said, you're, you're buying brain cells for the life of the, the client, not of the life of that transaction. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Other, other thing I'm like that I was really curious with CRMs, right? Like, and, and how you use it. So like mine, I have reminders. So every day when I walk in, I have a calendar in my CRM and it tells me who I need to touch base with that day. Right. And I can check it out, see what's in there. But do you use any of the reminders? Do you use it from like a clock? Like do you use it? Oh, call this person at two o'clock. Do you use it from a daily thing or do you use it more of just like as an overall like these people are prospects, these people are actively looking at homes or are pre-approved, or how, how do you segment, segment you know, that aspect of your database and CRM? Yeah, that's a great question. So it literally controls um, what my schedule is for that day. So when I get into the office, you know, the first um, things that I'm opening, I have three screens as most loan officers do these days. Um, you know, on one screen, I've got my LOS, on my next screen, I've got Outlook. And on my third screen is my CRM. Um, and the, you know, that's the, those are the first things that I open up. Um, my CRM, you know, my main page has got all my tasks for the day um, and meetings. So if I've got any meetings, it shows me there. Um, but outside of that, it has my task and that's on my homepage of my CRM. So when I get into the office every day, I see, you know, that day I've got uh, 20 different tasks that I need to do. And those are tasks that I've created. Sometimes my assistants created them, um, but normally they're created by me. And, you know, they're things like call John back to go over um, loan numbers, follow up with this client on if they've decided what direction they're going on, uh, you know, email this client about that. I mean, it's, it's all sorts of different stuff. It's normally just phone calls and emails, but it literally tells me what I have to do that day. Um, and you know that's my direction. I mean, without that, I'd be like, I don't know what to do. I would just be waiting for the phone to ring. Um, it literally is what drives my entire day. And that that's so key because I, I hear this all the time. Is like, I mean, we all know that you have to have a plan when you show up, mm -hmm. right? And it's nice checking things off the list. But like, too many times people have to do lists, which yeah. just means like you got to do it at some point. Whereas it sounds like your task list kind of gives you times and like yeah. what day you're going to do it and like really hones you in and you're almost using your CM and database, not for what most people think you're using it to organize and run your day. Right. I do. And in the other thing that's really key for me is, you know, I log every single phone call and every single email incoming and outgoing into that CRM. So if a realtor or a client calls me up and says, um, we're going out at looking at properties this weekend on the Smith file, um, you know, just wanted to let you know, bam, that phone call gets logged in there so that when I go into that record a month later and they still aren't under contract, I'm like, wait a second, they, they went out looking at properties. I need to call them up again, figure out what happened. Um, if a client sends me an email and says, um, you know, we need to get our pre-approval amount increased 50 grand, bam, that email and the email I send back gets recorded in that CRM. Not only for my memory, because I can't keep all this stuff you know, if I, if I don't talk to a client in 30 days, I'm like, I don't remember what went on. So it's not only for me, but it's for my team because my team is tied into my CRM. So if I'm out of town on vacation with my wife for a week and John Smith calls in and goes, you know, I want to talk to someone, you know, my assistant can go into my CRM because he lives and breathes in it too. He can see exactly it's, it's an entire story of that client. And, um, you know, I don't see a lot of people utilizing that feature of like recording phone calls and emails. It's, I, to me, I can't imagine not doing that. Yeah, and, and let me ask you this, when you said you brought up that realtor, do you do you database and CRM your real estate agents too? Or is that just more as tagged as something for that person? So John Smith's your, your pre-approved client. Mm -hmm. And if his agent, Sally calls in, you're tagging it under John or do you have your CRM and database for your agents as well? Well, that's actually the, our, our CRM just got a, um, uh, an upgrade and the new version that we're on, that's actually one of the, cause th the whole thing about CRMs or any technology is, is to automate the process, re reduce, uh, double data entry and save us time. Cause time is our, is our biggest asset. So in our old, uh, version that we had, if, if a realtor called me and a client and we had a conversation, I would want to record that call in not only 
um, that client's record, but also the realtor's record, because maybe we talked about the fact that I want to grab a happy hour with her. And so I want to record like this conversation in old system. I would have to do that two times. Now, when I go to, there's a little button, log a call, it allows me to tag other records. So I can record a conversation and say, we talked about increasing the purchase price on this 50 grand in it. And I can tag that to however many records I want. And then when I go into each of those records, that phone call conversation note is going to be in there. Got it. And then now do you use multiple CRMs or do you feel like, I mean, you got, I mean, I don't want to say multiple CRMs cause that's kind of silly, but like, do you use multiple programs for different things? Like, so do you use one for your database and your CRM and then you use another one to kind of follow up with your pipeline or is it all in one place or, you know, or do you use another thing like constant contact to do monthly email blasts or, you know, do you have multiple programs or just, just the main one? We just have the main one. Um, you know, and I know that's a, a pain point with a lot of people is, you know, they don't quite have everything they need in one system. So they end up building out. The only other thing that I'm doing right now, um, which is kind of, I guess, another system is um, we have a, a Trello board that we've built for our pipeline. And the only, in, in actuality, I think we're going to be able to get rid of that with the new version of our CRM because it, it should take care of this. Um, but the nice thing about the Trello board is um, it, it gave us more of a visual um, representation of where people were in our database. So the one thing I struggled with in the past is like, yeah, I can run reports on my CRM and, and see all my pre-qualified buyers, but I like seeing a visual of it. And Trello has a really good system where you have these little cards. And as someone moves along the, the pipeline, you can actually take the card and move it along. Um, so it, it's not a huge double data entry for us, but that was the only other thing you know that we were doing. Well, I actually, we use Trello for our pipeline as well. We use it for our loans and contract pipeline. Mm -hmm. And the other sweet thing about using it for like pre-approvals or pre-calls or people that are looking is like, you know, you have your list and you've got the uh, cards you can move up or down side to side. Like visually, it's nice for me to be able to like drag this guy from pre-approval over to out looking at properties yeah. and like know of all these folks, these five could offer today. Now, these mm -hmm. guys are also great, but like I don't have intimate knowledge that they're looking at a house today, right? So right. That, that I don't, like you said, it's not double dipping, but I, I also really like that data entry or that visual yeah. way to, to look mm -hmm. at it, so. Yeah. Now, well, Dave, I, I mean, we covered a lot. And I mean, I, to me, I've picked up some things that I know I'm gonna take notes on and write down, but like, I guess if there's any one last thing that you would say that you've learned because it sounds like, you know, your CRM is not just your CRM. It's not just your database. It, it truly runs your day. What is the most impactful thing? Like, and let's talk from a business side beyond just like, I don't feel scattered, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you really started honing this in, did you see your production, your volume go up? Did you see your hours spent at work go down? Or like, what was kind of the biggest takeaway as you've you know, dialed this in? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I have not always had this mastered, nor do I consider myself like I've, I'm, you know, got it all figured out. It's a, it's a work in progress, but um, I've definitely gotten better over the years, and um, it, it, it has had a huge impact. I mean, part of the pain point for me is I, I realized how much money I was losing by not staying in touch with, you know, past clients and having a, a way to really track that data. Um, I mean, I can't tell you the amount of millions of dollars of production I lost over the years because I didn't have this mastered. Um, and so, you know, for me, it was like just learning from tripping down the hill so many times. And I was like, you know, I got to get this figured out. Um, and so, you know, the biggest thing I would, I would tell people is like, again, just start where you're at with what you have. And if your company provides something, just start slowly and utilize it. You know, the, the, I talked to so many loan officers who are like intimidated by technology and CRMs and I'm by no mean like a tech expert, but just start with something, you know, and if, um, if you can just start small and just get used to it, um, you know, you don't have to master an entire piece of technology. You can just start and just try something. Well, and, and I can echo that cause I'm not a tech expert either. And I, for years, I thought, well, man, you know, I'm a, I'm a shake hands and sit down and have lunch with folks type of guy. And I've seen a massive improvement 
And the way I use mine is like literally name, phone number, and conversation tracking. Right? Like anytime an email, like you said, email or a phone call, like I take a note just so I can always have this running history. My team can see it if they need to jump in. But like just doing that, not even with automated emails, not even with any, just those things, mm -hmm. it's like night and day because the old way of like kind of doing it by hand or memory, inevitably you're going to call somebody and they're going to be like, oh, we bought a house last month. Well, that was like an awful feeling because <laughs> then I look at where yeah. I, last time I talked to them, I was like, man, I haven't talked to them in like eight months. You know, shame on me. It wasn't their bad that they picked yeah. another one. They're like, it's my fault, right? And yeah. that's when I kind of hit that tipping point. It's like, okay, I'm at least going to know that I'm talking to everybody every so often. So Yeah. Well, yeah. And you want to make sure. Are, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say one last thing. You want to make sure you, uh, you know, don't ever run into a situation, you know, where you're like talking to a client and, you know, their spouse dies or something like that. And then, you know, you call them up five years later because you don't have a CRM, you, you know, and they're like, oh, how's John? And, you know, she goes, oh, he died. You remember I told you that 10 years ago, you know, like that, th those sort of things are like important parts of, you know, database management. <laughs> Yeah. Or, I mean, just another thing as simple as like, I had one pop up yesterday, talk to him and she's like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm due any day with our, our first kid. They're not buying a house in the next 30 days. Like, mm -hmm. right. Like I, I don't need to email and, and ping them over the next three weeks. They got enough stuff going on. doesn't mean I can't ping them next month, say congratulations, you know, and that stuff, but it's really good. Like, I mean, you know, I, I know you went kind of the somber route with the death, but like, <laughs> It's really good, like Great life days. event stuff or yeah. somebody is graduating high school. I put that kind of stuff in there because I've really found that as you build those relationships, it's not, I mean, you do a good job on mortgages, but it's, it's also really about connecting with people in ways that they're human, right? They're not just a right. mortgage or a loan. And those things go a long way, which if you use those notes, you can really, really kill it off. So. Yeah. And the biggest thing, you know, is letting people know that you care. I mean, that's what it boils down to. It's not trying to make more money or, or that sort of thing. It's, it's like, I want my clients to know that I care enough to, you know, keep them in my system and, you know, record, you know, stuff so that it does show them that when they call, like, I actually know who they are. You know, I, I know you uh, had a call with uh, Bill Mervin and, you know, Bill is so great at building relationships. Um, he's amazing. And, you know, imagine if you were to build all these relationships, but then you had no way to like stay in touch with them. I mean, it's, it's a critical piece of that whole puzzle. Yeah. And there's very few folks that can do it off memory. I mean, I'm sure there's some folks out there, but you know, if you do enough loans, like you can't remember it all, but what'll happen is I'll find myself like I, just today I had a client email me saying, Hey, I was down at the uh, preschool and I saw your your name on the uh, sign-in sheet. Uh, you know, maybe a more unique name, right? Haggis said. And I was like, no way. He goes, I think our kids are in the same class. Well, I had to look back. We closed four or five years ago. Okay. I looked back and then wow. I started, oh, that's right. He is here. And then his wife was name was that. And then it all started flooding back. But yeah. right off the get-go when I got the email, I was kind of like, I mean, I know the name, but then it all kind of was put together. You know? Yeah. And people feel special when, you know, they talk to you and you can start to remember that stuff. They're like, wow, you are really cool. <laughs> well, and then he, you know, I'd had a note in there because we have like a little special interest thing and he's a Dodger fan, like a, like a big Dodger fan. So I yeah. had to, you know, World Series just got over a few weeks back and I had to, you know, con console him a little bit for their loss. But, you know, it's just things <laughs> yeah. like that will resonate for, for long, long periods of time. Right. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Well, hey, I don't want to keep these too long, Dave. I really appreciate you taking the time. I, I hope if you're watching this, you share or you pick up a lot of stuff that you can implement in your business. Feel free to share it, right? I mean, that's the whole point of Mortgage Success Blueprint is a community to make everybody in the industry better because you know a rising tide ultimately floats all boats. So, guys, I really appreciate it, Dave. I appreciate your time. Uh, like, click, share, follow down below or on the sides here. Other than that, we'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks, Reagan.